Hi, I'm Paul Taylor, editor of The Connected Business. With me today is Ed Amariso, who is the Chief Security Officer for AT&T, the global telecommunications provider. Ed, we're sitting here in the Global Network Operations Centre, or NOC, for AT&T. What do you do here? So what we do here and across our network is we're constantly measuring normal, looking at different types of ports and protocols and volumes, a lot of gearhead type uh, data collection. And then if we see something that looks like it's spiking, a particular port or protocol that's gone off the map, then it could be equipment that's broken or it could be a cybersecurity attack. So we look very carefully at things like that here. A lot of companies obviously have uh, begun to appoint or have already appointed uh, chief security officers or CISOs. Um, when did AT&T realize that it needed someone of your stature to do the job you do? I'd say about 10 years ago there was a recognition in the boardroom that some of the potential scenarios involved in cyber well, had some grave consequences if not properly attended to. So just along the same lines as say a chief risk officer in a financial organization Chief security officer has, al has always been about managing risk. Uh, now one thing that I've seen evolve in very recent years is that the position has required more, I think a more technical kind of uh, emphasis than it did in the past. Simply because technology has gotten so complex and pervasive. But you also have to be, I guess, a good communicator, a translator <laughs> into the language of business because there's no point in going to a board and talking uh, techno geek. The, uh, the joke in amongst CISOs and CSOs is you have to be very careful what magazines are put on the airplane of your, uh, your board members because if there's a security <laughs> article in there, then that'll be question one at the board um, meeting. As you say, mobility has become part of most companies' business. The internet, a lot of companies really rely upon the internet as a delivery mechanism, either for content or for e-commerce. What has that meant for your business uh, with your, your customers? It's a great question. You know, there's this very conventional set of activities called managed security service provision. And, and there's a lot of, I'm sure a lot of your viewers use an MSSP, managed security service provider, to manage their firewalls or intrusion detection systems. And the way that industry has emerged is it's been very perimeter dependent. So the firewalls and all the other edge devices that would sit protecting your enterprise would be managed and monitored in partnership with an MSSP. And AT&T has been in the middle of that. The progression now is away from perimeter. So the idea that you're managing these perimeter devices is moving more toward how can my provider virtualize that capability so I'm not as dependent on this perimeter architecture? And I think a lot of our services and a lot of the services that your viewers would be looking at from any security provider are moving in that direction of virtualization. Do companies have to do something specific to their network architecture to improve their, their capabilities, if you like? They do. I think a lot of uh, pundits make the problem too simple by saying we just need better awareness, and if you just had some best practices, and if we all pick better passwords. I sure wish it was that simple, but it's not. These are architectural issues that need to be attended to. That's why CISOs and IT managers and CEOs need to be together strategically and how we march off to cloud and mobility. Those architectural decisions have to be made carefully. And I think if made carefully, the good news is that as you move to a mobility-enabled cloud, and if you do it right, you can both realize that promise of mobility and also reduce the risk. That's kind of our goal. Can we help you do something you want to do, reduce the risk at the same time, and get yourself to a better place? So that's what we're all about. Ed, thank you very much indeed for talking to us today. Oh, my pleasure.